Hi, I'm Rabbi Yitzhak Adlerstein, Director of Interfaith Affairs for the Simon Wiesenthal Center. In a few days, I'll be traveling to Minneapolis to convey Jewish concerns to the delegates of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA. In 2004, PCUSA was the first mainline Protestant denomination to pass a resolution for divestment of funds from the State of Israel. They were copied by other denominations who took up the issue. Some passed, some didn't, but it's been on the docket ever, ever since. In 2006, after lots of opposition from the rank and file in the church, they undid divestment, but some of the hardened elements in the church wouldn't give up. In 2008, they passed two contradictory overtures, which nobody has figured out to this date. One of the things that they uh, resolved to do was to start a procedure of studying the entire Mideast from the bottom up, and they empowered the Middle East Study Committee to prepare a document uh, on everything concerning ch uh, church policy. Uh, this turned out to be pretty bad for our interests. They appointed nine people to the committee. Seven out of nine had already voiced pro-Palestinian uh, sentiments. Only one was pro-Israel in any measure, and he soon quit. When news of what the study committee was going to put on the table was leaked by the heads of the church in Louisville, we were the first at the Wiesenthal Center to uh, protest loudly and we did not mince words. We, in a, in a press release, we uh, argued that the Presbyterian Church had, it was ready to declare war against the State of Israel. A month later, when the full report appeared, we turned out to be, unfortunately, entirely correct. Here it is, a couple of months later, delegates are ready to meet. And there are a number of terrible overtures on the table, including calling Israel an apartheid state, calling for a secession of, of, of aid to, to Israel. But the worst part of it is the Middle East Committee's study, Middle East Study Committee's report on Israel, 172 pages long, and it has all kinds of horrific things for the state of Israel. It rewrites history. It shows no connection between uh, the Jews of the, the Bible and the Jews of the past with Israel to today. It starts modern Israel's history with the period after the Holocaust, where guilt by Western powers was what, what, uh, created, what created the modern state. It claims that Israel's occupation of the West Bank and of Gaza is the cause of everything that is wrong in, in the Middle East. Perhaps the worst feature is that it commends for denominational study something called the Kairos document uh, that appeared in Israel in December. This document claims that there cannot be a Jewish state in Israel. A Jewish state will be inherently racist. It reverts to the language of supersession which means that any mention of the Jewish people in the Bible does not refer to today's Jews who were replaced by the new Jews and essentially saying that there is no room for Jews left in history. Uh, Kairos calls for a cutting back of United States aid. It talks about boycotts and about, and about sanctions. Monday morning is when the work begins in, in earnest. We've been there in the past. We will be there again. We've testified in committee in the past. We will be doing that again, we hope. We will be speaking to every delegate who will listen to us. And we will be encouraging the significant number of friends in this church whose uh, aid we've cultivated uh, in, the last, in the last four years and who will be working tirelessly to defeat these anti-Israel uh, uh, measures from the floors of committee and the, and the general plenary. We'll be there again. If you're curious as to how all of this will play out, then watch for us on Twitter, where we'll be providing you with the latest inside information 
and commentary. There's a lot hanging in the balance, and you'll be the first to know. Thank you.